Hi, everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel, and it is a Shabbat. That means you should be resting today, you should be spending time with our Father, and you should be in His Word. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to dive a little bit into the Torah. You can call it your morning Torah portion, whatever you call it. We are looking through the commands, finding out what applies to us today, what we can still do and what we can't do anymore, and if it even matters at all. So that is our journey, that is our mission, is to learn the Torah and share it with you guys what our findings are. And the question is, does it matter at all? It it does, you it said does. it doesn't matter at all, and I would say absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, if your soul means anything to you, then absolutely everything in the Torah would apply to us and it would apply to us today, minus the stuff outside of the priestly stuff. That's what we're diving into is we're trying to figure out what it does and what it doesn't. But at the very least, we should know of the Torah commands, regardless if we can't sacrifice and we can't do things like that, there could come a time in the future when the kingdom is coming, that they do bring back sacrifices and that all of this stuff, you guys may be the priests of the future. You guys may be the Levites. I do not know. But our creator has blessed this family. He has sanctified us. He's put us apart. And there's, we don't, we just, we're just going over the amount of blessings in this house and we can't keep track of them. There's too many. And our creator will fulfill his love and his promises and all of this, everything he says, he's a faithful um, Elohim and he loves everybody. I truly believe without a shadow of a doubt that he listens to prayers. Um, I've seen them. We've seen them. We've seen a miracle of prayer over and over and over again. And, um, you know, you pray in the darkness, you don't hear anything, but you can, you can definitely hear things. And so... As we go over this tour and as we learn this stuff, um, we truly invite you guys as our family to sit down with us here. We're putting some leaves in our little glass table and you guys are all around us and huge love, huge shouts out to everybody. Um, before we get into this, I want to go over something from yesterday um, real quickly because there was a translation error and I actually took it to um, Dr. Stephen Pigeon, who is one of the CEOs or one of the people of this. But this is it right here in, in Leviticus 17. This is what the verse says. For the soul of the flesh is in the blood. He and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. Souls. For it is the blood of him that makes an atonement in the soul. So I went and I emailed Dr. Pigeon yesterday. So, hello, Dr. P. Hope you're well. We are reading for our YouTube community from the Sefer, and we noticed this part. Then I just quoted what I just read. How does he and I fit into that? Is that the correct translation? If so, who is he and I? Last question. Please, do you have any time when the next digital Sefer in the App Store will be released with a John translation fix? I think it was John 13.3 or something. 1313 or something that was the, the screw thing. So I got a reply back. And this is what he says. Jason, I don't have any timing on the app correction. We are currently cutting staff and that position is unfilled. In addition, our app developer charges us a premium to make adjustments. So it is kind of on the back burner for the time being. As for Viacra 1711, Leviticus 1711, the Ivrit says, Who van I? He and I. So um, I don't know what to make of that. I guess what I would say is that if any one of you guys were looking at buying the Sefer app, um, we have noticed there are some translation errors. And if they are things are on the back burner, I would probably say that you guys would want to stay away from that. However, the hard copy Millennium Edition of the, the actual hard copy of the Sefer does have the correct John verse that I was, where it basically says Yah and Yahushua are the same, but every other version is correct. So um, we'll leave that with that. And I want to get into something we haven't gone over for a little while that we should probably go over. And um, let's just go over these, right? This is this is a Shabbat. And everybody back in the day, how, how did a Shabbat look back in the day? Um, people would get up. They'd probably eat their meals they had. They would, I think they would go to the synagogue. They would all go and like go around. Why would they go to the synagogue? Because not everyone could read. So they would go to somebody that could read and read the Torah to them so they could understand what the Torah and said. not everybody had a Torah. Yeah, no, that was a very, very rare. Do we need to go to a synagogue on Shabbat? 
I do not believe so. I don't believe there is much of a place to go to a synagogue, and I don't think they'd be teaching the right thing. And plus, everyone has their own Torah now. Everyone has a Bible. Yeah, we're, we're illiterate now, where we were probably illiterate back in the days, and you know people just you know had their duties, but most of us can read now. And so we have been blessed at a time such as this, um, literally at the end of the age, right on time, where we can all read the Torah. And when you read the Torah... It is a lot different than what they have given to us in modern day Christianity or modern day religions. You have literally 60,000 plus different what they call religions or different religions of Christianity and a mix of all sorts of stuff. And every single one of them deviate away from the actual Torah. Because if we were in the Torah, you wouldn't have 60,000 different religions. You would have one. You would have the. You would want to be a Hebrew person. You would want to be an Ebri, and um, there, there, it's not really a religion. It's a way of life. You know, you can say it as a religion. I think they've taken religion. They, they've completely corrupted this. They've they've changed the days. In fact, they, what day did they change Sunday, Cade? You mean what day they changed the Shabbat? Yeah, they changed the Sunday. What day did they change it? When is? It was like March 7th, 321 or something. Yeah, March 7th, 321 under the, the guise of Constantine. Um, it was it was changed, right? And they, they basically blended a whole bunch of pagan stuff together. And they they, basi- they, they went away from the way that our, our creator has said. And it came from a, what they call the Creed of Nicaea, um, where they all came up. And they didn't have any apostles here, right? And so it's 300 years later after our Messiah, Yahushua, was, was walking the land. They changed the days of worship. And so it is utterly important that we have the mark of our creator upon us. And the mark of the creator will not go upon those who are worshiping on the a first day. And, you know, one thing I would like to touch upon that everybody, everybody always says is, that, you know, I'll hear this over and over. Jason, um, we, 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 you just changed the day to a Saturday. You're still on a Saturday. Guys, when you say the name Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all that stuff, none of that stuff matters, right? When you say months, January, February, March, whatever, none of that matters. There's no such months on our creator's calendar. There's no such days on our creator's calendar. You have first day, second day, third day, all the way to seventh day. And the seventh day is when we should be worshiping. And I'm going to be doing another video, maybe even today, but I believe that we have identified the day of creation and at torahcalendar.com and the day of creation to where we are today is in a cycle of sevens it's cycles of sevens and cycles of fifties and as we read through this torah it is very important and i mean it should be obvious that our creator does stuff in cycles of sevens it's seven this sprinkle blood seven times stay outside the camp seven days um everything it's all up on cycles of seven He's not going to go off onto that. And so if we are able to identify the actual day of creation and we've counted seven days from that time, then that should take the entire lunar Sabbath keeping and it should, it should show truth to this. And everybody is stuck on a calendar and it doesn't really matter the calendar unless we can identify the day of creation. And if you identify the day of creation, which I believe we have, then it's cycles of seven. And we just count seven, 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 seven to where we are today. And today is the seventh day. And so if you're saying, well, yeah, that, that, the Jews changed it to Saturday or something. No, nobody, nobody did anything. There's no such day as Saturday. It is seventh day. Whatever day, seventh day falls upon, upon these satanic calendars is how they've done it. They've hijacked all of these calendars. And so it doesn't matter as long as we are in cycles of seven. All right. So with that, anyone have anything on that note? No. All right. Let's begin. Um, Jade, give me the first 10 commandments. Let's see if you can do this. Uh, be fruitful. Got it. Multiply. Yep. Just give me a second, you guys. Think. Get those little squirrels are running. They're running. They're running. Yep. Uh, Kids already the seen, got it. Okay. Subdue and have dominion over it? Yes, subdue and have dominion over it. Excellent. All herb bearing tree or plants for you to eat? Yep, for food. Got it. Okay, this is number, what command is this now? Number six. Number six, all right. Um, man and woman should create their families? You got it. Good job. Good job. You're 60% already. Seven. Okay, what's seven? Um, and I've said this before, it's very important. 
Oh, uh, this is a... If we don't do this, we become slaves. Follow Yahuwah? No. Master Sin. If you are not mastering okay. sin, then you will absolutely become a slave to Hasatan. And so it's very important. All right, Commandment 8. Oh, that, used to, that used to be Commandment 8. Yes, I know. I, I, we don't study these, and so I'm just throwing you guys under the bus. So Commandment 8. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Commandment 9. Don't eat the blood. And we have, if you look at these verses in here, there are a tremendous amount of verses that support this commandment. And so instead of having, you know, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be six commandments right in here where I think the, the Jewish folks, when they have their 613 commands, will add that. It's all the same command. It's just reiterated over and over and over in the Torah. So don't eat the blood is extremely important. Commandment 10. Anyone remember? Walk before me and be perfect. Now, how are you going to walk before Yahuwah and be perfect, gentlemen? To walk according to his law, statutes, and commands. Right. And so when we walk according to his law, statutes, and commands, how is it that you can be, you know, people will say over and over and over, oh, oh, Jason, good luck. In fact, I had a guy this week, he, he was yelling at me, and uh, he said that uh, good luck keeping the commands of God. When you go, when you're judgment, you, you see what he's going to say to you when you keep his law, statutes, and commands. Uh, and, you know, that's what the Christian conundrum is. It is extremely, um, you know, if you're only walking into a religion and you only have what people are willing to spoon feed you out of the Bible, it is incomplete. And we are unable to rightly divide the word of truth when we are not reading the word of truth. The word of truth is what? The Torah. The Torah, yeah. And we have to rightly divide it. So, yeah, walk before me and be perfect. Commandment 11. Very important. Guard Yahuwah's covenant. And um, we have several different things in here. Yeah, obey my covenant. And what is the covenant? What If we're talking about the new covenant or renewed covenant, what is that, Eli? Keep my commands. No, what is the, well, it's kind of. What does the new covenant say? Um, the new covenant? Yeah. Like what Yeshua, when he renewed the covenant? Hebrews 8. Let's see, Hebrews 8. It is, the, uh, it, right, it is the Torah renewed. It was reestablished through the what people. What does the Hebrews 8 say? What is the renewed covenant? Renewed covenant. It should be the Torah renewed. It was through Yehoshua. You guys need to read Hebrews 8. Okay, it says, In the end days I will write my, my Torah upon their hearts, their minds, and their souls. And it says the people will not need to tell other people who the Yah is because everybody from the smallest to the oldest is that. The new covenant. What is the old covenant, gentlemen? Only Yashrael knew the covenant. What is the old covenant? The old covenant is... The Keep my laws, statutes, and commands, and I will be your Elohim, and you will be my people. You guys are a little, little out sleepy today? Mm. You're a little sleepy? Mm -hmm. really? All right, so let's go back into that. What is the old covenant? It is Keep my laws, statutes, and commands. Okay, so what is the new covenant? Everyone will know the commands and do the commands. Keep my laws, statutes, and commands, and I will be your Elohim, and you will be my people. It is the exact same covenant is where I'm trying to go with that. Why are you guys looking to confuse each other? I don't know. I thought that was like a trick question. That was no trick question. That was simply um, some basics here. But it's early in the morning, folks. So uh, much love to everybody out there, too. Um, I love get, throwing my kids under the bus. It's a lot of fun. All right. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Commandment 12. Commandment 13. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Am I successful at this? Do you guys know the ways of Yahuwah? I believe so. Yeah, I, besides the old covenant and new covenant? Okay, that was like that, a, that trick. was a trick. That was a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, state your case here. State your case. Technically got it right. Technically you got it right? How'd you get it right? Keep my commands. Yeah, it's all about keeping commands. That, that wasn't what I was looking for. Dad was looking for something else. All right. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Okay, why is that important? Uh, because the name gets changed to God, and then you don't have a true relationship with someone if you don't really know their name. Why not? Alan? Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk to you if I was. You can't call me Alan at some point. I'd be like, dude, that's not my name. You, you don't really know who I am if that, you think that's my name. But your nickname is Jubs, and you answer to Jubby. Yeah, that's my nickname. <laughs> we, had to, we had to call him that many, many times. Yeah, so remember Yah's name for all generations. So the Jews won't even speak. The name of Yah, they go like, or something like that. They so have like a sound, like a sound effect. Yeah, it's like, like a, we can't say that out loud. And so, um, yeah, Jews wear white tzitzit and they won't even speak the name of Yah. And they eat chicken on the next commandment. Um, keep the Passover. Uh, Passover is very, very important. We came and we passed over the Passover. And these are all, these all these in black are sub-commandments of keeping the Passover. It's how to 
do the the Passover. And we will share this with you guys very soon, this document. We'll try to flesh it out a little bit more. Commandment 16, keep the feast of unleavened bread. All right. Um, 17, there's one Torah for the stranger and the Ibrahim. Sanctify all, commandment 18, sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. And I still think, I don't think, I thought originally we were going to have something different because I wasn't sure how to sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. But I think that is still very important. I, and I think I need to sanctify um, you to Yahuwah, Jade, um, who is my firstborn and um, everybody. I, you know, um, Ancient Path of Remnant did a video the other day on this, on talking about this, and she did a very good job. All right, Commandment 19. There are no mighty ones before Yah. Um, anyone want to bring, what does that mean? It means no other idols, nothing, don't worship anything else as Yahuwah. Yeah, but what about the guys, the football players? What happens when you, like, spray paint your face and you go to these NFL games and you have, like, the guy's jersey on your back and you're sitting there with little flags and you're screaming for them and every last movement that they do? Is that a... Are you bringing mighty ones to before Yah? And one of the painting on... The whole painting and cheering on other people thing is actually like a pagan tradition. It's a huge pagan thing where you paint yourself and go celebrate paganism. Um... Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an idol worship because the people live and breathe. That's who their gods are. That's who they aspire to be. Yeah, and everybody, that, that's true. That is who you aspire to be. That is who, who you uh, look up to. And if you're looking up to, um, I hate to say it, some guy that's like, you know, the football players are all steroided out. I mean, they're not even real humans anymore at this point. So I guess uh, that's something you shouldn't be doing. All right, 20. Do not bring Yah's na name to not. 21, keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. So um, inside of this, we have a bunch of uh, other commandments. But commandment 21 is uh, it's actually 21, but it's actually commandment 4 in uh, the, the 20 commandments. So And then we cook all, all food before Shabbat. Lots of stuff about Shabbat right here. All right, 22, one of my favorite commandments. What do you think it is, Joey? One of my favorite ones. Obey your parents. Oh, that's really good. You got it. <laughs> Honor your parents. Now, why do you guys suppose, Eli, why do you guys suppose this is important? Uh, we may live long upon the land that Yahoo has given us. Yeah, your dad might kill you if he doesn't. <laughs> so, no. Um, why, why do you think it is important to honor your parents? Um, because they're your parents. They raised you. They teach you. They have experience where you don't. What else? Why, Kate? Why should you obey your parents? Uh, because there could be something that they know that you don't know, and you, if you disobey it, you could end up dead. Okay, so let's take this over. Why is it important that we honor Yah, our, our parent, our, our dad is Yah, right? Daddy, big daddy. Because if we disobey his commands, I mean, he'd exile us from the land. He'd slaughter us. He could have a lot of terrible things happen as we get cursed for disobeying his Torah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially and, and, if we know it, especially if we know the Torah, what's written in it, and we disobey it, we will get cursed. Yeah, and as, as youngsters with um, not really much of a future for a bride to be in this world because everybody has looked Cobra Commander in the eyes and is like taking the, the uh, bite across the face, um, there's just no, there's no, there's no, there's no hope for a, um, a future. But if there was, and we were, before, say we're like in 2017 and we were looking for a bride for you guys and you guys end up having kids and all this kind of stuff. When you guys have kids, you will understand when you say something and your kids go be go and do something else, it doesn't just make you mad. There's a, there's a level of disrespect. There's also, you will be furious, right? And uh, don't worry guys, we're not, I'm not throwing you under the bus on this. I'm just saying that you guys will understand this, but you won't understand it until you guys have kids. That same kind of, when you're furious, go take out the trash. The trash is going to get taken out. Cling on this up. Do something. And it, you're like, oh, okay. And you guys acknowledge it. And then you walk beyond it. And then I have to go back. It's disrespectful. Imagine a creator who gave us a perfect environment, a perfect body. We're able to do everything, right? We are able to stand on one foot, close our eyes, and jump around in a circle. That's amazing that our creator has given us the abilities to do such a thing, right? We are we are very um, good. Cade, wake up, wait, buddy. Um, let's stop closing your eyes on me here. All right, let's go. Twenty three. Do not kill. Twenty four. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. It's twenty five. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. It needs to say metal tool on that. It's metal, not a tool. If you have a rock tool, it wouldn't matter. It's metal. 
It doesn't say metal in the verse. It doesn't? And if you will make an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone. For if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is a tool. Yeah, so it was, was like, metal. Didn't so, it say something else well, before? Exodus 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, So I don't think you're supposed to break the stone who it is. Um, that a tool has touched. Because I was going to build an altar before, not to sacrifice on, but it's really hard to get the rocks out of it, especially if you use uh, pry bar. So my version says, And if you make me an altar of stone, do not build it of cut stone. For if you use your chisel on it, you have profaned it. So I think it should... I, I, yeah, maybe it is about cutting the stone or something of the sort. So um, I don't know where I got metal at on that before. I think I saw that somewhere, but I don't know. All right, let's continue. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. That was one I didn't know about. That was one I, I think we should always figure that out. It says Exodus 20, 26, Neither shall you go up by steps unto my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Um, and remember that? Why do we have that? Well, you ever completely figured out where me someone placed the altar somewhere? There's some steps they didn't want to go up by. Remember David's guys? One of one yeah, of them was like on the, the run. Horns and they grabbed it. And they he was on the run. He's about to get killed. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's probably a work in progress. Thirty. Do not oppress the fatherless or the stranger. Thirty-one. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. That was fatherless or widow. Not what stranger. did I say? Oh. Do not oppress the fatherless or widow. Probably shouldn't mess with the stranger either. Um, but I, that's not, that's... You never know what the stranger's going to do. Don't, don't add to the Torah. Yeah, don't add to the Torah, thanks. Um, do not eat what is torn of any beast. And then we added another commandment here yesterday because we got that out of Leviticus 17. But if you do eat of it, you're unclean until evening. So that's uh, an addendum to that. 32, no false report. 33, do not follow multitude of evil. Don't judge unrighteous against the poor. Or the rich, it should be this. It should be the same judgments. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Don't oppress a stranger. There it is. Don't mess with a stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to any other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use this anointing oil on a normal person. And this was Yah's special fragrances. 49. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Is it the same perfume or is it the same stuff? One's anointing on the other's perfume. Yeah, one's anointing, one's a perfume. All right. Thanks, Eli. Don't eat the fat. Over and over and over, we've been told to eat the fat. Yah loves the smell of that, and I, I don't know if he eats it or likes the smell of it, but that is his. Totally his. Return what is your neighbor's. And then 52 is obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. And this is not fleshed out yet because we will end up with uh, a whole bunch of in uh, bold commands out of this so that we can break this out of this. And we're working it. Same for 53. Um, obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. So under that, we will have exactly what the commands are, and then we'll have all these supporting verses. And then we have our last command here, which is actually to uh, keep the Day of Atonement, which came out of Leviticus 16, and then no sacrifices to other gods, right? Don't sacrifice to any gods. All right. All right. Poor Kate, he's trying to stay awake here. He's doing the best he can. It's a Shabbat, good thing. All right, so I'm going to open up my handy dandy. Split screen. Got it. All right, and then we are going to roll into today's stuff. Thank you guys again for everybody that's joining us. We truly appreciate your time. And, um, you know, if you're enjoying this, uh, thank you so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all that he uh, preserved this family to, to read Torah with you guys and um, that you guys are have the eyes to see and ears to hear. So here we are. This is called un Unlawful Sexual Relations. And I didn't re pre-read this, so hopefully it's not... Um, parental advisory. Yeah, parental advisory. Um, yeah, I actually read over a little bit of this. Is it parental this. advisory? No, it's pretty much like don't look at naked family members. It's a, it's don't look at they the nakedness. Don't cover their nakedness, so we skimmed over it. So That's not good. Yeah, and it might be parental advisory on this. Maybe. Let's read. Let's see what we got. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll put a disclaimer up if it is. But hopefully not. Hopefully we can get through this and it is um, G-rated, as they say. All right, Leviticus 18. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael and say unto them, I am Yahuwah Elohekim. 
After the doings of the land of Mitzram, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and guard my ordinances to walk therein. I am Yahuwah Elohim. I feel like a man there in verse 4. It does sound like a verse. You shall do my judgments and guard my ordinances to walk there. Yeah, that is a command. Good job, Jubs. Jubs is the um, the uh, command of police. We got that. You're right. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so commandment four. Nicole, you on that? Yep. Um, that probably should maybe go under like walk before me and be perfect. Or like I was obey my. Say, I think it's a sub command under one of the other ones. Yeah, I feel like walk sub- before me and be perfect. Yeah, maybe or like maybe guard my covenant or something like that. All right, so yeah, let's toss that in. All right, so we got the family working here. Okay, eighteen five. Ye shall therefore guard my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah. That's why I think yeah, it should that be a feels, connection that, like, to that command it does, as well. Yeah, four and five should definitely go together. All right. Nicole's got her work cut out for her. And um, I've heard it from people before. They're like, oh, you shouldn't be reading Torah and stuff on Shabbat. That's work or putting out videos. That's what we're supposed to do. That's the day of Shabbat. Yeah, we're actually, we're actually supposed to be doing this. And I, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I do know that this is not work. This is, I mean, this is what we'd be doing anyway. We'd be sitting around doing... Um, stuff, Kate. Okay. If we're wrong for teaching the Torah, then Yahushua was also wrong when he was teaching the Torah on the Shabbat because he went out, he, he went and healed people, and he read the Torah to the people as well in the synagogue. Yeah, so we have examples of it, and, and so this is, um, you know, this is not servile work. Would by it go any under guard Yahuwah's covenant? Yeah, probably. probably. I would say, yeah, because I do my right rulings and guard my laws, so yeah. Yeah, so and my, and they, they may actually go under a couple different commands, perhaps. All right, so verse six. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahuwah. That's a command. Yeah, so this is a this is a new one right here. Um, no one is, and so Eli's pointing out, no one is to approach my close rel- relative to have sexual relations. I am the Lord. Yeah, and I mean, we, we can keep this G-rated. This is this is something that is, I mean, it should be basic. It should just be... Look at, like, you're supposed to look yeah, you're, at you're, yeah, you need to keep your clothes on. Everyone needs to keep their clothes on. We don't need to be freaky here. And so, that, not not by any means. So, Nicole, did you get that? Verse 6? Not yet, but I will. Okay. 6 is a whole new commandment. Okay. Yeah, that should be... 7. The, maybe this is like, maybe this might go under its own set of commandments. Yeah, the next one's like, too. don't look at the nakedness of your family. Like that. Right. The nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother shall you not uncover. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Yeah, basics, right? Keep your clothes on, everyone. The nakedness of your father's woman shall you not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. Okay, so again, we have this. These are all commands. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, or daughter of your mother, whether she is be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness you shall not uncover. These seem like basic things, but the world has gone completely astray. Yeah, there's things Yahoo obviously said we needed. He knew that people would be bad at this. Yeah, there'd be freaky deeks, and they shouldn't be that. The nakedness of your son's daughter or of your daughter's daughter, even their nakedness, you shall not uncover, for theirs is your own nakedness. Okay, so all these, every one of these things, keep your clothes on. The nakedness of your father's woman's daughter, begotten of your father, she is your sister. You shall not uncover her nakedness. So again, this is all commands for within the family that you would not do bad things. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister. See as your father's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister. For she is your mother's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. You shall not approach to his woman. She is your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's woman. You shall not uncover her nakedness. I feel like there's just really basic things that you should never do. Yeah, but, but, you know, if they weren't written down, then people go, well, you know, I don't have any kind of laws. I didn't have anything. I didn't know. Well, now you know. Well, it was obviously done in uh, Cain and, and Egypt because and before in the first verse it says, don't do as they did before, and then he goes into Canaan, this. Canaan, right. So it was obviously something they did before, and it's something that's in, rooted already into their traditions after 400 years of living there. It, it's it, it's worldwide. This is a sickness that is worldwide. It is literally a, a sickness, and this, Yah's ways are not sick. 
All right. Um, 17. You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shall you take your son's daughter, take her son's daughter, and, or her daughter's daughter to uncover their, her nakedness, for they are near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Like anything in the family circle, in-laws or outlaws, whatever it is. Yeah, in-laws, stay, anything. Stay away from the family. Move, like, away from the family. Right, and I mean, when you, when you get into this point about having people with their clothes off, number one, you should not be in these situations, right? If you're in this kind of a situation, you're, you're going to be led astray. One of the ones in committed here. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of sins, tons of them. And so, um, 18. Neither shall you take a woman to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness besides the other in her lifetime. What does it say, vex? Do not take your uh, Do not take wife, a woman as, as a rival. rival to her sister. Yeah, so where do we see that before? Uh, Rachel, Rachel and Leah. Yeah, Rachel and Leah. And so what happened within that whole... There, there was like a war. There was like... There, there was always an infight. Now they had contention because they wanted the love of the husband, and but he has been loved one more than the other, and so they didn't feel equally loved, or they were always trying to fight for the love of the husband. So that's kind of interesting how Yah set that up. I mean, today's marriage is strictly man and woman, at least in today's society, but there's no laws that say you wouldn't, you, w- you can't have more than one woman. This is very, this is where you have um, a woman and her sister. This would be, this would be a, a totally different situation, right? This would be, you know, if Laban hadn't have uh, ripped Jacob off, then that wouldn't have been an issue. Um, right, y'all saw what happened. He's like, this can't happen again. Let's not do this again. Yeah, and it was contentious. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was very, it was probably a very stressful house. Uh, Jacob was probably already gray by the time he was done. I would imagine they had two separate houses. I imagine each woman had their own house. I don't think you're going to be, I don't know. I don't think you're going to be co-dwelling like that. I think it would be a cat fight. Yeah, that'd be and like a boxing. And it says they have two different dwellings. Okay, it does? Yeah, because right. it was He's like he was going to stay with her in her dwelling or something like that. that yeah, we also got that. into that with um, not only Yuck, not only with uh, Rachel and Leah. Um, we got into that with, uh, what, it was Isaac. It was Isaac, not Yuck. Um Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Who had Rachel and Leah? Jacob. 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 And then we had from there, who do we have? We uh, have the 12 tribes. Yeah, the 12 tribes out of that. And then we also had contention within that 12 tribes. Remember? Because we had all the kids. And remember, the, the women were all fighting. And, and remember, the, the kid got the love apples. Oh, yeah. They're, they got apples. Yeah, that, was, that was Reuben. Yeah. That was Reuben that brought the love apples. In, and uh, uh, Leah sold them to Rachel basically here I want Jacob for like the night or whatever it was and but there were also handmaids as well so it wasn't just two wives yeah, it was, like it was four. two there's there four was women Bella there and Zilpa as well right and it's like almost like the concubines they, they didn't really mean a tremendous amount it wasn't they were just like slaves of some kind I, I don't know how it actually works um all right let's roll Let's see, 19. And you shall not approach, also you shall not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. All right, I'm keeping this G-rated. We went over this in the last couple of chapters on this. And so, yeah, stay away from your woman. If if her cycle is in, you stay away from her. So is that a different commandment or would that be the same thing? Yeah, that feels different. I feel like the last two are both different commandments. Last two words says don't take a one, take a sister to rival her. I think that should next, be a separate like its own command, and, and then, then the one, next one's a command as well. The next one's probably go under um, the cleanliness one. Yeah, in today's society though, if you were sitting there trying to like, well, I don't even think it's legal. I don't even know what states it would be legal in. I think I don't think down here it would matter, down to South America style. But I mean, in the states, it's illegal. You can't like you have two two wives. Um, you got a jail for that, then? Yeah, I think so. I don't think you can just have multiple wives like that, like at common or uh, legal wives. I, I don't know, huh. but I, I do know the Mormons used to be all up on that, and that was the thing about the Mormonism is uh, their uh, their founder guy Joseph Smith or whatever his name was. Um, he ended up with a whole bunch of wives, and the, they was like a big thing. The Mormons were all into multiple wives, and so they, I don't think they ended polygamy until I don't know when they did, but. Um, it's not a Torah command, right? It's, no, it's not actually, a sin. It's not, it's not a sin, no, actually. All right. Um, so we got that, Nicole, or you guys? I'm trying to. Okay. 20. Moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's woman to defile yourself with her. So that's pretty much do not commit adultery. Like, yeah, commit so adultery. that would be under commit adultery. And I mean, yeah, you're, you're defiling her, you're defiling yourself, and you're committing adultery. And um, one way or another, I mean, if it's your neighbor's woman, 
that you're definitely committing adultery. So that's that's some family wrecking badness. Okay, so that next one is, uh, are you? do we need to go over these later? Yeah. All right, we'll have to go over these afterwards to get these all dialed in. There's quite a few here. And you shall not let any of your seed pass through to Moloch. Neither shall you profane the name of El, of your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. Mine says, do not give any of your offspring to pass through to Moloch. Why wouldn't we want to give anything to Moloch? Because like sacrifice. It's like serving other Elohim. It's like giving a sacrifice or like child sacrifice or something. Yeah, Crazy well, they, that, why did they why did they offer up things to... It was uh, like to appease Moloch or something. It was like, like, it was all sorts of stuff, man. They, they was, these it's kind of what they believed were, in. They thought it was kind of like their god, maybe. Yeah, there's all sorts of nasty stuff. That, that should be a command, too. Don't give your kid to Moloch. Okay, so when we're done here, I need you guys all stick around and help us get these dialed in. Okay, 22. You should not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Uh, no sodomy. Uh, yeah, that's dude. basically what it's saying. Um, Mine says, do not lie with a male as with a woman. It it's is Adam and Eve. It's not Adam and Steve. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what it is, right? And so, uh, yeah, d- don't no sodomy. Don't, I don't know how to say it best. Don't be gay. Okay, you shall lie with any beast. You, neither sh- <laughs> you shall lie. <laughs> neither shall you lie with any beast to defile yourself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there to. It is confusion. Absolutely. It's, my it's perversion. Yeah, confusion, perversion, whatever it is. Everything's uh, wrong about it. Yeah. And so... Um, That's also a command. It is It is a command. And so, yeah, I don't even... It's crazy. We're not even in this. People are broken. People are broken. All right. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. I guess the nations are filthy. That's just... why. That's why he's have them smite them all because they're just really. Nice. And I mean, here's here's the gig. We we have an example of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? We knew, and we've actually learned because we in the extracurricular books we know that Sodom and Gomorrah was um, not just. I mean, these people were were evil. Tell us some of the, the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember how they would uh, like they starve the the people yeah, that were outside. Yeah, people knew there that anyone would like feed the hungry, right? If they had pain in the hungry, they'd like beat up the people that would like. If Feed somebody hungry. wandered into the town in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were not they were not supposed to give them feed. They were supposed to set them up until these people were broken, and then they come and rob them and kill them and probably rape them. And so they they literally could not feed new people in the town. The people would get stuck in these towns and they couldn't get they had no food, no nothing, and they would they wait for nightfall to come and they would all get killed. And so it was a very corrupt land. But at the same time, this year in North America, during their so called pride parade um we saw stuff that i would say makes sodom and Gomorrah look like a boy scout camp well i'm not gonna say that because the boy scouts have all turned filthy as now too um make it look like a church camp right it's it's terrible what is going on and it, it, they're breaking all of these commands about nakedness and all this stuff all right let's roll sorry yeah, we are on uh... 25 and the land is defiled therefore i do visit the iniquity thereof upon it and the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore guard my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourns among you. So this is a, he calls it again, abomination. Like right? everything above here is an abomination. Yeah, and if you don't want to be an abominable, what he also says eating swine is abominable, right? And so that's something you absolutely hate. It's an abomination. And we wouldn't do it, right? So you need to, people need to leave their clothes on. I mean, there's no reason. You just don't need to do this. 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That the land spew not you out also when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations... Even the soul that commits them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye guard my ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am Yahuwah Elohim. All right. I guess that takes us to the end of this. I don't know how to uh, title this one because I don't know if this would be uh, something that younger kids could see. I mean, I would I would imagine this is something you every kid should know. I mean, you shouldn't. 
you, you, yeah, your uncles or somebody comes over, never, never, ever take your clothes off. It doesn't matter who they are. Keep yourself pure in all things. You want to keep yourself holy. You want to keep yourself set apart. You don't want to uncover your nakedness. It is something that is a gift from Yah, all of this stuff. And we need to be, um, we need to be humble in all of this. We need to make sure that we are obedient in the way that we are acting, in the way that we are living, in the way that we um, do stuff like this. And so I guess this would be a, a lesson for everybody. All right, gentlemen, um, it is a Shabbat, and I got kids over here who are about to go to sleep on me, and so um, maybe next uh, next time you see us tomorrow morning, uh, the kids will be awake after a good, solid day of rest. Jade's awake. Kate's not. Um, Eli's sitting there bobbing his eyes open. Just, He's I don't know. Fall asleep. He's about to fall asleep. Yeah, toothpicks in the eyes trying to keep them open. And Nicole's over there busily adding verses in. Okay, so I think that is it. Um, everybody out there, thank you guys so much. Yeah. We're going to feature this again. We're going to hang out with you guys as we feature this thing so that we can sit and chat with anybody who is wanting to hang out. And um, I guess this is just our Shabbat lesson that we have. Um, it is a glorious day. Our creator is wondrous. He never, ever stops loving you. He will never, ever stop caring for you. He asks us to do one thing. is to obey his laws, statutes, and commands, right? And I don't see that they're very hard. I don't see that there's something that we shouldn't be doing. I see that we should be doing them all. And if the world was doing them, it would be a better place. And so we are looking forward to the kingdom that comes. And the kingdom that comes, everybody will be doing these. It, you're not going to make the kingdom if you're not keeping the stat, law, statutes, and commands. He's not going to send the pig eaters up into the kingdom. When, when, Mount, when, when the kingdom comes and it drops on Mount Zion or however that in, entirely unfolds, you are not going to find people that are eating pig in there. That, that's gone. The days of, of those people. And if they can't get through this and get through that, we have a higher power. And so many people are, they refuse. They refuse to seek a higher power. It's like they, they, they are too proud to get on their knees to a creator, but yet they couldn't create a flower if you asked them to. Create me a flower. Nobody can do any of this, right? All the, the world can do right now is reproduce the things that our creator has already done. Right. And so it is important that we are always in the ways of our creator. Gentlemen, do you have anything else? Yes. Today is the Shabbat day. It is a day of rest. If you are barely celebrating Shabbat, you should follow the commands. If you're listening to this on Shabbat and you want to start following it, today you should rest as much as you can, do the least amount of work so you can try to get into Shabbat, get into a routine of following Shabbat and uh, learn the Shabbat laws so that you are not cooking, you're not buying, you're not working. You are resting on that day. Yeah, it's it's all about rest, right? It is not to get in our cars and drive off to the local 501c3 church and play music for 30 minutes and go to Sunday school and go to church, throw your money in the in the uh, pan that goes around and you know pay off the the preacher who's giving you the wrong service, right? The wrong sermon. Okay? Church is not the modern day synagogue. Church is a a Catholic originated thing where you would go on Sunday, you sit and listen to the preacher preach a sermon for whatever. That's actually a originally a Catholic thing, and that's where the Christianity church derives from. All that is originally pagan roots. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing about the Christians. They believe the church is going to be raptured and that there is a house of church or the house of Gentile. And guys, the, as, as much as I threw you guys under the bus for Hebrews 8, I, I encourage everybody to read Hebrews 8 and know this because it is the renewed covenant. It's, ba it's, it's coming out of Jeremiah. It's basically repeating what is in Jeremiah. But Hebrews 8, it, it talks about this, right? There's no house of Gentile. It's the house of Yashrael and the house of Yehuda. Um, if you're not under one of those two houses, then you're not going to be making the kingdom to come. So... Anyone else? Uh, no, not really. Shabbat Shalom, and I uh, hope you guys have a very restful day. Yep, Shabbat Shalom from the Boss Clan and Yaz Clan to everybody out there. Much love. All right, All right. Shalom. shalom.